Hello and welcome to CodeDevelop. In this video, I am going to show you how to create a dictionary app using an API call that not only gives the definition and example of the searched word, but also the pronunciation. Encore. If you are new to React Native, I would also suggest you to check out my other tutorials like the Pedometer app or the To-Do List app, which are more beginners friendly. And then you can come back to the dictionary app. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. This is the second part of the dictionary app that I am doing. In the first part, I did a very simple layout of the app. In today's video, we are going to finish building this app by making all these buttons work. And also, we are going to display the definition and example of the searched word. For that, let us start by creating a function. I am going to call the function as getInfo. For understanding what task this function is going to perform, we need to have a look at how the API call works. So this is our application right here. In our app, the user has entered a word that he or she wants the definition of. Suppose the word entered is Quidditch. Now, our app will send the word Quidditch over the internet to the server and the server will then return some response. And this is how the API call works. Now, the question is, where is the server? Well, our server is hosted at this address. Let us have a look at it. Here, as you can see, there is nothing much information because it doesn't have a word yet. Let me go ahead and add our word Quidditch here. There you go. Now the server is returning some response. Let us copy this URL right here. Now back to our code. We obviously cannot put the word Quidditch permanently here because no matter what the user searches, the response will always be the definition and things related to Quidditch. So what do we pass here instead? We are going to pass the new word because every word that the user enters gets stored inside the new word. Now, after passing the URL, we also need to fetch some data from the URL. So for that, I'm going to write down a return fetch and pass in the URL variable dot then data. Now let us have a closer look at the data here. It is not easy to make sense of this data because it is not in the correct format. So we need to change the format of this data into the JSON format, which is much more understandable. Now I have done this conversion manually online. However, we need to do the same thing in our code as well. And that is done by writing return data.json. Next, let us start taking information from this response here. The first thing I'm going to take is the word itself. I'm going to create a variable, call it as word. Now this is the very first element in the array. So of course the index is going to be zero. For storing this word, I'm going to use the use state once again. And now I'm going to set the checked word. Let us go ahead and check out the output. So here in the text, I've written new word. That is why as I'm writing, the word is appearing right here. So we don't want this new word. However, we want the checked word here. So I'm going to mention that. And now on press of this go button, I'm going to call the get info function. I'm going to fire up an inline function here and then I'm going to call this function get info. Let me check if I've written the correct spelling here. Seems to be correct. Let us check it finally one more time. Perfect. So the entered word is coming as Quidditch and this word right here is from the API call and not from our app. In the app we have written capital Q but the API is returning with small q. Let us go ahead and fill out definition and example as well. So for the definition, we have to go inside meanings and then definition and then take out this definition. Let me show you how to do that. First of all, I'm going to create one more variable, call it as def response zero. Then inside the response, we are going to go inside meanings, then definitions and finally definition. I'll be using the use state once again for storing the definition. Before checking, of course, I have to print out the definition here, here beside this text. Now let us test it one more time.
perfect as you can see the definition is also appearing the final thing that we need from the api call is the example so in the same manner i'm going to do it once again first of all a variable is going to come then response meanings definition dot example use state once again and then set example finally display it here in the text let us check it with a different word this time group so as you can see the definition and the example now is coming as well however you need to remember one thing that some words will not have example so there is nothing much we can do about it for example if i write down hello here so there is no example here because the api is not returning any example in this case we cannot do anything about it because it is from the server's end also if we type quidditch once again this also doesn't have an example let me show you how the structure is so there is a definition however there is no example here but if i show you an example of one more word on core the example section is very much present and let us go back and check in our app as well Moving ahead, let us make this speaker button work. This button will be responsible for the pronunciation of the searched word. Now, the first thing you need to do is to stop the process in the terminal by pressing Ctrl C. Then in the terminal here, you have to write down expo install expo speech and then press enter. This is going to install the expo speech dependency, which is going to help us in the pronunciation task. Now, let us import the package from the very top here import the entire package as speech from expo speech now let us go ahead and create a function for performing the pronunciation part here you simply need to write on speech that's from the library we have just now imported dot speak and then pass in the checked word finally we need to attach this function on press of this speaker icon I'm going to fire up an inline function once again and call the function. For testing, I'm going to take out the microphone for a while. Encore. Encore. Now the only thing left to do here in this app is to make the clear button work. So I would like you to stop this video and give it a try yourself. Were you able to do it? If not, let me help you out. First of all, I am going to create a function and then set each and everything to empty state. Then I'm going to attach this clear function on press of this clear button. Perfect. So our app is done. Hope you have liked the video. If you have any questions, you can very much ask me that in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to learn more apps and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.